Hello everyone, my name is Alia and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be redesigning my OCs from grade 7, Nathari and Pira. I actually made these two for a short story that I had to write for school and while the story is absolutely terrible, I think there's bits and pieces that kind of have potential. So today I'm just going to be focusing on the characters, not really the world building or the plot, and I'll make those into separate videos so you guys can kind of see the progression of me revamping this whole story. Alright, so we're going to start with redesigning Pira. I don't have as much of a concrete idea for what her story is going to be as much as Nathory, but we're starting with her because the first chapter in my old story is from her perspective and I want to read it out to you guys so you can kind of get a little bit of insight on what was going on in this world before I completely revamp it. The history of the sun and moon elves go back thousands of years before I was born. These were peaceful times of kindness and love. Everyone just lived their lives, no fighting, no war. That all changed when the Dark Elf attacked. He was looking for a stone, the Stone of Azula. If he used it correctly, it could destroy galaxies, oh, <laughs> it could destroy worlds, galaxies even. So the two tribes came together and went into battle. They won before he could use the stone's full power. But soon, greed took over both elves and they won the power all to themselves. Soon, a war started, and it has been going on for 100 years. My name is Pira, and this war took everything from me. My family, my race, my home. I will rise like the sun and destroy any moon elf that gets in my way. So yeah, <laughs> that's the first chapter. Honestly, if you guys are interested in me reading the rest, it's not very long. Like, I could do a video where I just read it and then put a speed paint in the background. That would probably be pretty funny. So if you guys are interested, then comment below. Now, my biggest problem with um, this first chapter, and honestly, the story overall, is that it really resembles something. But that all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. That all changed when the Dark Elf attacked. My favorite show is Avatar, and it has been since I was six years old. You can definitely tell throughout this story though, like there are even Earth Elves. So the first thing I did was get rid of all of that. Obviously there are still the Moon and the Sun Elves, but all of the different elements are gone. <laughs> now, like I said, I have made up some new world building, but I'm not really talking about it in this video. I'm more talking about the characters, personalities, and designs. So let's finally get onto the designs. Pira's original design is on the right, and I honestly don't have much to say about it except what are these hands? It just makes me laugh every single time I look at it. I do have a lot more to say about her redesign that I did, I think, in grade 8. Um, the first thing is, why is it mostly grey and green? She's supposed to be based off the sun, so I'm not really sure where those choices came from. Um, she has an armband that would definitely prevent her arm from moving. Her pants are two different lengths, which basically when I was designing things, I was like, what looks cool? If it looked cool, then I put it in, even if it made absolutely no sense. Alright, so the first thing I knew I wanted to fix with both designs was their direction. I feel like they were just both standard, boring, stereotypical fantasy outfits that didn't really say anything about the people that wear them. So I looked and did some research on what different cultures wore throughout history. And this is so specific, but I was looking at 17th century um, Turkish clothing and I thought it really fit the Sun Elves and what I kind of wanted their society to look like, so I started to take a lot of inspiration from there. I also made a Pinterest board for her, which helped me to have more direction in my design and gave me a baseline to start from. 
So here are some kind of half-baked ideas I have for the world building. This kind of ties into her outfit, so I'm just going to tell you guys. Um, I knew I wanted the moon elves to have magic, kind of something inherent to all of them. But the sun elves don't have magic, so if they're kind of fighting in any way, that seems a little bit unbalanced. So I thought that um, sun elves have access to this material that they can infuse magic into, or magic is already infused in it, and they use that to make magical weapons. So they're kind of on the same um, level as the moon elves. So they're a very militaristic society, and they focus a lot on um, defense and fighting. So obviously Pyrrha is a warrior. And not just any warrior. I know in the past I gave her this backstory where her entire family gets killed by a moon elf, and I just... <sighs> it's too stereotypical. I wanted their characters to contrast in interesting ways, which you'll see later on, so I'm giving Pyrrha her entire family. They're still alive, but instead, rather than just being um, a random warrior in the army, there are eight main families that are closely connected to the royal family, and they're called, they're kind of like the eight points of the sun, which isn't an actual thing, like there aren't a specific amount of points on a sun, I just kind of made it up, but that's what they're meant to represent, and each family does something for the royals. So Pyrrha's family is kind of in charge of very high level fighters that will protect, um, I don't know if I'm going to call her a queen yet, she might have a different name, but like I said, very half-baked ideas that kind of protects the royal family. That results in Pyrrha having a lot of rivalry with her siblings. Though they will all eventually be the queen's guard, one of them will get to be maybe like the general of the army, so they're all vying for the queen's favor. I needed to think of a new idea for why she has the scar on her face. I was thinking that maybe she got it from one of her siblings. They were probably training with each other and she got sliced in the face by accident, or maybe not, who knows. And I think that between her and maybe the oldest, maybe she'll be like the second oldest, um, they have a lot of rivalry between each other because they're both the closest to getting that position and they both want it really bad. So lots of um, fighting between them. For her design, I added in more yellows and oranges and reds because that's what brings to mind the sun. Um, definitely not gray and green. I also added in a little bit of purple because Nathuri's color is purple, like her hair is purple, her dress is purple. So when they're standing next to each other, I still want their designs to look cohesive. In Nathuri's design, as you'll see later, I add in a little bit of yellow. Originally, I wasn't actually going to give her any armor, but she was starting to look um, not very much like a warrior, so I decided to add some in. Um, we've got no um, constricting elbow bands. The armor isn't fully functional, but it is based off of real life references that I saw. And maybe if I ever redesign her again or have any alternate designs, I'll make some more functional armor for her. I actually had to let go of a lot of things for this design. She looks very different from any of my original ideas and it was kind of hard to change those things because they were very nostalgic to me. She's existed in my head for a long time, so changing those fundamental aspects of her were a little bit challenging, but it worked out for the better in the end. Now onto her personality. In the original story, she's very stoic, angry, mean, because of obviously all that happened to her. Her and Nathuri have very much of a sunshine and grumpy dynamic. 
which is absolutely fine, but that dynamic does show up a lot in other stories of mine, so I kind of wanted to differentiate them from that and almost subvert that dynamic. So, in this version of the story, at first, Pyrrha comes off as a little bit stoic, maybe even angry, but it's more so because she never really people her own age other than her siblings. She's always been very driven and very focused on her goal, so that hasn't really given her much time to interact with others in a friendly way or in just a casual setting. So when her and Nathory meet, she comes off a little bit stoic and maybe a little bit harsh, but in truth, she's just kind of awkward. She's not really very morally gray. It's easy to tell that she's a good person. She's grown up with a loving family. Maybe her parents were a little bit harsh and they pushed their children hard, but the bottom line is they still love them no matter what. So yeah, Pira is definitely a good person. Which contrasts her um, original personality, which was a whole lot more morally gray. In this, I like to think she has a strong set of morals that she always follows. Though she's a warrior, she doesn't kill needlessly and uses it as a last resort if she's in a really sticky situation. Overall, I'm so happy with how this design turned out. At first, I was kind of unsure. As you saw before, I was going through all these different ideas and I didn't like any of them. But once I kind of mushed them all together, I really, really liked how it looked. Um, I am planning to make a comic with these characters, so in that case I'll have to tone down a few of the details, but I think this is a good baseline. Okay, now on to Nathory. So at the beginning, I know I said I wouldn't talk about world building, but I, I lied. <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit so you guys can have a bit of context for her character. In my original story, it begins with Nathory just having a normal day until she hears screams outside of her house and realizes that her entire village is being murdered by sun elves. This doesn't make very much sense, especially because she's supposed to be the princess of like their kingdom, so I'm not really sure why she's living among the normal people in the town. Um, yeah, not a great beginning. <laughs> it's very stereotypical. And then after her dad asked her to go look for the stone of Azula because it might be able to save them. And Pyrrha is asked the same thing by her queen. And then that's how they meet in my original story. This also doesn't make any sense because the stone's been lost for a hundred years. I'm not sure why they expect suddenly people will be able to find it again. In my new version, Moon Elf Society is going to be very different. I didn't want it to just be another fantasy kingdom like it was in my original story. So I want it to be a theocratic kingdom where they worship a deity, probably the goddess of the moon. I still haven't really decided yet. Um, the priest is the leader of the kingdom and is kind of known as the chosen and holy one who knows the deity's will. This is actually Nathari's father and he acts as something of a king. Citizens are going to be, be made to follow very harsh rules in order to keep the deity's favor. I haven't exactly decided on these rules, but I know one of the main things is going to be magic cannot be used for violence unless you're part of the army, obviously. Um, people who break these rules are arrested or maybe even executed, um, depending on the severity, and they will lose their powers. They all are told that they get their powers from the moon goddess. And I want Moon Elf society to be built around magic. Like, it's absolutely necessary to have magic to function and complete any daily activities. So losing your power would be devastating. 
One day, Nathuri ends up in a situation where she breaks one of the rules and is absolutely terrified of getting her powers taken away. I think through, I don't know, a bunch of events, she'll find out that the moon goddess doesn't take away people's powers. It's her father who takes them away, and it's almost her father who's acting as a god. Um, once her father realizes that she knows all of this, he doesn't execute her or anything like that because the people really look up to her and see her as something of a, as like a high priestess. Instead, he tells them that she's volunteered to go on a journey to look for the stone, which again hasn't been looked for or even found for like a hundred years. That is basically a death sentence in itself. So I think that Pyrrha will also do something to break the rules of her like warrior training and then get sent away to look for the stone as well and then that's how they'll meet of course this isn't sunstone because i haven't thought about it that much but yeah that's kind of where i'm at for the story right now as i said before i wanted to take inspiration from historical clothing so the moon elves are based off of 16th century europe i believe that's what i chose so Nathuri is wearing um, a dress inspired by a lot of the dresses that I saw while scrolling through Google and Pinterest looking for inspiration. More so like this 1630s specifically. <laughs> Again, that's really specific, but I feel like it gives a more cohesive look when I start making designs for the other moon elves. They'll look like they're part of one community. Here's her original design. I actually don't have that many problems with it, which is why they look so similar. I just wanted to give it a more clear inspiration rather than just fantasy clothes. But I did like some aspects of it. Like the color scheme of purple, dark blue, and a little bit of yellow is almost one-to-one -one with my new design. I also really, really love how I gave the sun elf's upturned ears and the moon elf's downturned ears to differentiate between the two of them. Now onto her personality. Like I said before, originally they were kind of like a grumpy and sunshine duo, so Nathuri was very bubbly, very excitable. She was also extremely naive and didn't know very much about the world because she's been hauled up in a palace all of her life. Throughout the story, she taught Pira how to appreciate the world around her and how to be kind to others, and Pira taught her more about how the world truly worked. In my new story, just as Pira is going to come off, as stoic and closed off at first, but truly she has an extremely kind heart. Nathuri in the beginning is going to come off as kind of cheeky and very kind, but truly in her heart she might not be the best person. Yurid knows what real love feels like, she has her family who cares about her, so in turn she knows how to show real love and she knows how to be truly kind. But on the other hand, Nathuri doesn't really know what real love and kindness looks like. She's never had that example. Her father, who should care about her more than anyone else in his life, and who she cares about more than anyone else in her life, is really what's basically a dictator and just sent her out on a death mission without any second thought. Her father is very manipulative and I think she almost has taken on that trait without even realizing it because she's around him so much and sees the way the Moon Elf society works as very normal. Throughout their adventure, I think we would slowly start to see Nathuri's true colors by the way she approaches different situations and she would treat people in a way that Pira definitely wouldn't agree with and that would be a point of tension between the two. I would kind of like to see Nathuri go on a bit of a corruption arc throughout maybe the first book and by the end of it her and Pira are kind of enemies and maybe they would reconcile throughout the other installments.
Eventually, Nathri would unlearn everything she's been taught throughout her life on how to act and how to treat others, and she would definitely become a much better person. But in the beginning, she almost puts on a mask of kindness and really only is kind to someone when it benefits her. I would like to make this into a webcomic sometime soon. It's obviously very much in the beginning stages of planning, but if you guys would be interested in that, please let me know in the comments because I'm definitely getting excited about this story. I really love these two and their dynamic is so much fun to think about. Now back to the design. On, I'm not really sure what it's called, but the little strip of fabric in the center of her dress, I drew all of the phases of the moon. I really like how this turned out, and it uses yellow, so that'll tie into Pira's design. I decided to keep the purple on all of her extremities that I drew um, in my older drawing. I just toned down the purple a little bit so it didn't look so jarring and obvious. I also kept her little white freckles, which I love because I think they look like stars, and that really suits the aesthetic of her character. I have to be honest, this dress was absolutely terrible to render. It took me so long, and it just was not looking right. I wanted to take inspiration from a lot of old paintings from the time I was referencing, and in those paintings, the dresses were so beautiful. They were very realistic and they looked like real silk. And I wanted to replicate that style. I don't really know if I did, but I tried my best. <laughs> That's really all I have to say as of now. Thank you so much for listening to my rambling. I hope some of the stuff I said made any sense. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of this beat paint. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as well as follow me at alifloret88 on Instagram. Bye!